So Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, I've got another great, crazy college campus students incident for you all at Yale Law School, where the ch a chapter of the Federalist Society had invited two speakers to campus to discuss a recent Supreme Court case, one that is impossible to pronounce. Uzubnam versus Przewski is the best job I can do. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is, but <laughs> that's what I said it was. Uh, so this case involves religious freedom. The participants were Kristen Wagner and Monica Miller, the participants in the event they were going to have about this case. Wagner is general counsel at the Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a legal group that advocates for conservative social and religious causes. And Miller represents the American Humanist Association, which is, of course, a secular organization. While Wagner and Miller often take opposite positions in general, this specific case is a question of religious freedom, an issue that united many supporters of civil liberties on both the left and the right. So the ADF and AHA actually had both provided assistance to the plaintiff, Chike Uzubunam, whose college had prohibited him from doing, uh, trying to recruit other people to his religion on campus. So the scheduled discussion about the case, which was decided, by the way, eight to one in his favor, with John Roberts as the only dissenter for the first time ever and since John Roberts joined the Supreme Court. So the case was meant to illustrate that a liberal atheist and a conservative Christian could find common ground on free speech issues, according to the Washington Free Beacon, which had a great report on how the event actually went down. So the law students refused to recognize this common ground. Dozens of them protested the event and heckled the participants. So they interrupted Kate Stith, who was a law professor at Yale. As she attempted to introduce Wagner and Miller, Stith quickly became irritated with the students and actually dared to call them out. At one point, she said, grow up, which made them furious. Let's watch. Can I ask you all, as you know, Yale has a policy of freedom of speech. So in that video, students can be heard asserting the view that principles of free speech gave them the right not to merely ask questions or protest the event, but to ceaselessly interrupt the speakers. When Stith accused the students of, quote, disrupting the free speech of the speakers, the students fired back that, well, you're disrupting us. The Free Beacon has more. Quote, the protesters proceeded to exit the event. One of them yelled, F.U. Federalist Society on his way out, but congregated in the hall just outside, and they then began to stomp, shout, clap, sing, and pound the walls, making it difficult to hear the panel. Chants of protect trans kids and shame, shame reverted throughout the law school. It was so loud that it disrupted nearby classes, exams, faculty meetings, according to students and a professor who spoke, uh, again, with the Washington Free Beacon. At times, things seemed in danger of getting physical. The protesters were blocking the only exit, and two members of the Federalist Society said, they were grabbed and jostled as they attempted to leave. It was disturbing to witness law students whipped into a mindless frenzy, Wagner said. I did not feel it was safe to get out of the room without security. So police officers eventually arrived to escort the panelists out of the building. Their presence made the, student, the students even angrier. Nearly 400 current law students signed an open letter accusing Yale of putting the lives of the LGBTQ community in danger, ostensibly because police are disproportionately likely to harm members of the LGBT community, at least according to the letter. I don't know that that's true, but that's what the letter asserted. And also because the ADF is recognized by the Southern Poverty Law Center as an anti-LGBTQ hate group. Quote, understandably, a large swath of YLS students felt that Fed Society's decision to lend legitimacy to this hate group by inviting its general counsel to speak at YLS profoundly undermines our community values of equity and inclusivity at a time when LGBTQ youth are actively under attack in Texas, Florida, and other states. That's what the letter reads. We write today because in addition to the deeply disrespectful presence of ADF on campus and the faculty moderator's dismissal of our peaceful actions as childish, armed police officers were called into the Sterling Law Building in response to our exercise of peaceful protest. 
And look, students have every right to oppose the presence of police on campus. They want to, and they should feel free to protest anyone whose legal advocacy they view as hostile to the LGBTQ community. And certainly the ADF has taken positions in cases that people would characterize as anti-LGBTQ. But law students should be able to grapple with these positions and debate them. They can't silence every person who tries to express a view they disagree with. They shouldn't come away from law school with the impression that it's constructive to avoid engaging whatsoever with ideological opponents. Again, as the Supreme Court case in question demonstrate, trials can make for strange bedfellows and even lawyers who quarrel passionately, they must nevertheless be able to understand one another and show some basic respect. Future lawyers should have the critical thinking skills, intellectual curiosity, humility, and maturity to engage with ideas and legal principles that they may disagree with, said Wagner in a statement to the Yale Daily News. Unfortunately, some students who attended the Federalist Society event refused to allow others to speak and acted in an aggressive and hostile manner towards me, Professor Kate Stith, and Monica Miller from the American Humanist Association. So this kerfuffle at Yale comes two weeks after a similar incident at UC Hastings that I covered in a previous radar. You can check that out if you missed it, where law students prevented Ilya Shapiro, who is a libertarian conservative legal expert, from debating Rory Little, who was a UC Hastings law professor and a progressive thinker. So they were going to have a debate, and they couldn't have it because, again, law students shouted them down. The next generation of attorneys, judges, and justices are not acquitting themselves very well lately. It's difficult not to sympathize with Stiff's frustration that and when she just declared this, I think she spoke for a lot of people that perhaps they just need to grow up. Yeah, it's really, really uh, scary to think because these are Yale law students. Yeah, these are important students. When it's just the when it's just the uh, the uh, L.A. you know graduate students who are going to be unemployed anyway. But these, these people actually have important jobs to do. Well, right, these are the people where they do actually grab the justices from. I mean, these are yeah. the, these are the future judges of America, and that is. What is the most concerning about this is, and, and I've mentioned this before, you know, my fear is that as justices get replaced on the courts, um, they're, they're picking from people that have an ideology that is very much, you, you can only believe what I think you should believe and you can only say what I think is right, then that will maybe fundamentally change right. how free speech, you know, the First Amendment is actually interpreted. And that, to me, is very scary. And, and well before that happens, what about when these people are hired into law firms and the, you, know, you start having collegial or d debates or disagreements or different takes on issues, and or they start saying, no, you can't, you've made me, you, you've harmed my, you've compromised my safety by expressing a view I disagree with. Yeah. But Yale, a lot of those students end up going on to be professors themselves yeah, at law schools sure. around the country. So they're going to be educating future lawyers. This is Yale. It's an right. important place. And then they end up oftentimes becoming judges, a lot of them. Yale is kind of one of those special institutions because of the way they teach law that is more, uh, it, it, they don't, a lot of times the lawyers don't actually go into practicing law. They go into interpreting law and teaching law more philosophical from Yale. And that's that philosophy I don't agree with. No. And I don't really understand how they think they're going to accomplish whatever they're trying to accomplish by doing that. Like, who's that, who's that winning over? Or do they already feel like they've won and so they just need to suppress any, when, when what, I, what was the issue, this, what, what was the issue again? Like what were there, they debating? There, there was just going to be a, a discussion by two legal minds, two lawyers, about the Supreme Court case, which was a religious freedom case that was decided 8-1, mm -hmm. where actually the, both the liberals, and uh, the uh, liberal group and conservative group agreed and had worked together on the case. So it was supposed to be like, look how people who disagree mm -hmm. on a lot of issues can collaborate in sometimes in the legal profession and the just not allowed <laughs> also agreed right i mean to eight to one yeah it was eight to yeah. one yeah right. so lone dissent from john Roberts. What, what did he why did he dissent uh, so he said so the case it's a bit technical but the, ca the case was so this guy was you know, trying to recruit people to his religion on his the campus and the campus said this was like a violation of religious this was violating religious freedom he said no wait this is my religious freedom i get to do this but he didn't file suit until a, a long time later. So John Roberts said that it was like past, it was too outside the, or he couldn't show enough harm, yeah. and it's too it's too long. And if we we reexamine this issue, it just opens us up to tons of like frivolous. Right. Yeah. Roberts always does that. Whenever he dissents, it's usually because of a technicality yeah, of some kind. It was kind. a technicality. <laughs> okay. But, uh, hmm. So anyway, it's uh, but when I but anyway when I talk to students like this, I tend to hear them they're not thinking of it in tactical terms because, yeah, mm -hmm. right, this looks bad. We're all making fun of them now. Uh, a, a wide swath of humans are making fun of them. But their view is that it is what they're doing is necessary for the 
defense and protection of marginalized people in the community. Right. That's but their view. If if it's tactically stupid, it actually undermines those marginalized people. Yeah. But they, but they think people literally die because that, that woman, Wagner. Which would speak. be a good reason to take your tactics more seriously yeah. if it's life and death. It's, uh, it's crazy stuff. Whatever. But coming up, uh, New York State Assemblyman Ron Kim will join us to discuss updates on the Cuomo brothers. Stick around for that.